These attacks involved the use of um, using female suicide bombers. In fact, uh, we understand that one of, one of them uh, strapped a baby to her back. Uh, but then uh, I also heard that some of them will be giving you know, meager amounts, even as low as 20 naira you know, back in the day. I don't know how it is now. Uh, to, to what end do you think they, they, they are doing this? And what does this tell, tell us about the, the strategy or the tactics and strategies that these attackers often deploy? Um, the strategy, first of all, is to make sure that um, they have control of Goza. As far as they are concerned, is their headquarters. Is their head is the headquarters of Boko Haram. Tactically, they are the, most of these people that they recruit, um, you know, very literate. They don't know what. In fact, some of them don't know why they are carrying those bombs to wherever they are going to. They just tell them where this thing. When you go. Uh, when you are there, when there are many people among you, just pull this thing and, you know, you go to heaven, don't worry, you know. And um, it, it, it is it is a very, very uh, uh, serious issue because that propaganda persists where people who really don't know much about the, 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 uh, the mission are, are used and then, of course, dumped or dead. You know, so um, Ali Ngule, who is um, the, the commander right now of that um, Boko Haram faction, the Shekau faction of the uh, um, of, uh, Boko Haram, is the one that uh, is basically responsible for this because that is his area and they have maintained their presence in that area. And it's uh, quite worrisome when you look at uh, how much that state especially is... Uh, uh, budgeting for IDPs. There have been concerns that uh, some of these IDP camps have become bases for terrorists, especially in that uh, region. Uh, should this be, you know, a state government problem or a federal government problem? Looking at how much uh, the, the federal government has also spent, you know, in addressing extremism, especially in uh, the Lake Chad region. Um, well, you know, this uh, problem of terrorism it's actually a state government problem. You know, the uh, federal government is supposed to also step in to assist the state governments when they cannot deal with it. Uh, we've always left it for the federal government to be handling, right from when this insurgency started. The federal government took control and uh, doing everything up to the extent where we've come out to say that uh, we've been they've been technically defeated, you know, because... The federal government was there, but I think the Borno state government has done very, very well. Very exemplary, you know, in what, how they've handled this, especially when it comes to resettling the people and, uh, you know, uh, taking care of the IDPs. But you see, IDP is not a town. It's not a new town that will remain there forever. The whole, of, the whole idea is to uh, keep these people safe, in the IDPs for a while, rebuild their places and return them back to their places. Uh, but um, we have allowed the IDPs to be there and it has been, um, uh, uh, it's turning into a super camp and then of course expanding on a daily basis. And uh, unfortunately and sadly enough, we've been having reports about uh, um, uh, uh, Boko Haram coming into the IDP camps to recruit, you know, to recruit people because apparently if the government don't do everything to make sure that they take care of everybody there and then provide enough security uh, the people, some of them will run back even to uh, the terrorists because where the terrorists are hiding out is free for them, they have free movement they can go into uh, Cameroon and come back and stuff like that. So mm. I think let's go back to the drawing board and look at this particular situation because um, especially Goza, you yeah. know, it's necessary. Mr. McCree, I'm wondering how these, you know, uh, recruiters gain access into the IDP camps. Is it uh, a free-for-all kind of a thing that where people move in and out with, uh, on challenge or on check? Uh, that's one. And again, you said that this is the affair of the state government. We've often talked about uh, the, limit, the limits the state governments actually have when it comes to exercising their security powers or powers, because they will tell you that they are not the CEO, uh, they are the CEO of the state, 
only on paper, what chief security, uh, security officers of the state, only on paper, because they do not con control the federal government. And this speaks to the, the, the state policing. So I think I've just actually modeled about three questions in one. First, which is how do they gain access into the IDP camps? And second, the, 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 the governors, you know, manning their states effectively security-wise. Uh, and, and lastly, uh, which has to do with, um, I think I actually forgot that. But then carry on with those two. Very important. Okay. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. You see, uh, IDP camps are not like military fortresses. They are not. They are, they are just a loose uh, uh, gathering of where people are. Uh, they used to put um, some soldiers or even policemen to uh, look after the place so that uh, no new attack will come. But we'll find out that even the soldiers or policemen, they keep their lagadaisical about their duties. Uh, we've had uh, reports of uh, some of them being arrested even for molesting the females, you know. So it, it, it is a loose, it's not a very strict uh, area. People move around either looking for food or some of them go outside you know, to go and bring either firewood with which they are going to uh, cook their food. So when they do these movements, remember, uh, the, the Boko Haram people are not wearing uniforms, you know, especially when they are not actively fighting. You know, they're easily moving with the people. Um, of course, the women among them dress like the normal women, other women, and then they go in there. And uh, they, they actually um, uh, brainwash them and tell them to go in and do what you have to do uh, or go into the town and do what you have to do. So it, it is not a very strict uh, uh, situation where you, you get them in there. Now, talking about the governors, these crimes, the terrorist crime that is going on is a problem with state government. They own the problem. But like I mentioned earlier, the federal government has come in and uh, because there was a military uh, arms and ammunition being used, the military uh, was sent in to go and find them and then uh, we came up with that uh, famous uh, technically defeated uh, kind of language. But it's actually a state thing. And if it is a state thing, then we need to uh, get the state ready. And that is where we're now talking about state policy. You know, the, the, the police is not, um, they are not, uh, they, are, they, were, they are being overwhelmed. And because they are being overwhelmed, then they, they invite the military to come in. And in almost about 32 states in Nigeria right now, we have the military actively participating in internal security, which is not supposed to be. You know, it's not supposed to be. And that uh, we're advocating that they should try and pull them out gradually and replace them with well-trained policemen. Well-trained policemen. What is the difference between the soldier and the policeman? You know, they are all able-bodied Nigerian. And in fact, the guns that, you know, artillery and all that, those are meant for wars outside foreign wars. You know, it's not meant for... Uh, fighting people inside. That's why you see clashes are now happening in the country where the military is uh, culpable in the death of Nigerians. They are not supposed to kill Nigerians. 